while this is drying, this is a good opportunity for us to play around and practice on paper how to do these clovers. Okay, so typically we find them uh, in three, but you know, these are lucky ones, so they're four. All right, so it's up to you which version of, you know, clovers that you want to, uh, little shamrocks. Shamrocks are St. Patty's, so shamrocks a lot of times are four, if you're lucky. And uh, we're at the bottom of this lucky rainbow, so there's a, not a pot full, a hot full of gold coins that are waiting for us. So my little humor here for you. I know, you guys, I can't hear you laughing, but I hope you're laughing. So we need some more citrus green or happy green. And this time I want to put in the thicket or the sap. If you have sap, make it a little bit darker so that it stands out a little bit more, pops out a little bit darker than our gradient that we have in the background behind them. Okay. So whatever brush you feel comfortable with, I'm going to show you on the with a three-quarter brush just so it makes it really nice and big for the screen. So we're going to double load our brush. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to pick up my brush on, uh, on the side. All right, so you see how high my paint got up there? Okay, and the same, tip it over on that side so that you're really picking it over on the corner. And then load it up. Okay. And because it's cardstock I'm working on, I have to really make sure that I've got a good load going on. If you have wax paper on, you'll have a little bit more of a slip. Okay. And then I'm going to add just that little bit of white, brighten up the end. Okay. So I can get three colors going. Get that medium, the dark. Okay. And I do want it to be like a three quarter more dark than light. So you can pick up a little more dark, move it up a bit more. So it's always good to test your gradient out and just lay your brush down flat and drag it across straight and see what kind of coverage you're getting. Okay, so you can see I have a little bit of paint that's missing in the middle. So there's a good chance that very right in the middle there, because it's a brand new load, that I don't have enough paint there. Okay, so when I'm pushing and blending, I gotta push a little bit more to get that paint worked right up there. Okay, and if you have some floating medium, you can put a little bit in that. Add a little bit more paint. And let's try this gradient out again. Okay, so a little bit better. Still more paint. Still gotta work that brush in. Okay, sometimes you have to do it a little bit slow. Some people like to do it fast. But definitely, you know, making sure that you're accurate on your blend so you're not making a big mess everywhere. You're staying focused to going back and forth. Okay. And try another little spot again. So you'll see that I'm getting better and better with my paint coverage. Okay. And once we're happy with our coverage and our gradient, then you guys, some of you might be comfortable already with your tear, your teardrops. Okay, so that's basically up and over with a pivot point. And all the clover leaves are, are two teardrops. Okay, which create like little hearts. Okay. And you can do it where it's a little bit open. You don't have to like have a perfect pivot point when you're making the leaf. Okay. You can have a little bit open. So you're going to do one and then you're going to work your way over. And then so you can see that there's a little bit of a space at the bottom. But I still have the top part coming out and coming in. 
All right, so then that way I'm having that bell shape upside down. Okay, so don't worry about your white at the edge right now. If you want to have a little bit more highlight, you can always add that in later. Then I pivot it around. Okay, and then you're going to make coming into that same joining spot. So I usually split my clover in half, so that you're seeing like this, this a split going in both directions. Okay. Then you're going to start at the top, work your way, and do it backwards. Okay. So if you're not feeling comfortable with your shape, you can just do a rough placement one in there. Okay. And then you know what size they are, and then just go in the direction that you feel comfortable. If you're right-handed, you're going to be doing things like me. If you're left-handed, then you're going to be doing things backwards, right? So you're going to start at the top here, and you're going to work your way over. That'll feel more comfortable for you. Okay, so the thing about... You know, when your left hand is starting at the top like this, then I would start this leaf first. Okay. Then you got your placement. Then practice your right-handed strokes too. So that you can get that two hearts off beside each other. I always say it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. You know, you really got to practice everything. Okay. So you can see how if I go over it a couple times, it does come out a lot nicer. Okay, and then our last one is basically on that side. Okay, so you're halfway about 9 o'clock, and you're coming into about 7 o'clock, 7.30. Okay, so you're leaving all this space here from 5 to 7 open. Mm -hmm. And then what I do to add a little bit of a stem, you can turn your brush around so that you have the dark at the top. And what I do is I just do like a little tapping to get that V shape in there. Okay, you see that? Then I can pull it down to create my stem. Mm -hmm. So now if you feel like you want to add a little bit more of a highlight to your leaf, you can always fix, fix your gradient and then just fix your gradient here, okay? You see how high my dark is? Okay, so it's nice and got more dark than I do light. Then I'm going to tip my brush just to pick up that tiny little bit of fresh white. Then when I go to redo my brush stroke again, okay, I've got my white in there now. Then I can get that highlight in there at the same time. And if you feel like you want to go in and just, you know, do your little teardrop by itself, second stroke, you can, right, going to fix things, but you want to kind of bring it down so it looks like this is a little bit of a vein, okay, and then you can go back in the second time, and this is where I overlap a little bit, so that it looks like some of them are slightly overlapping the other ones. Then you can go in and just slightly overlap this one. So I don't usually worry about overlapping or flipping my leaves until I've got them all down and I'm happy with the basic shape of them all. Okay. Then if you have to move your canvas a little bit sideways to get that bit easier angle. Okay, so if you want to add a little bit of a flip, I'm going to stop about two-thirds of the way over before you start dragging down that's when you rock your brush over a little bit and then you can flip in okay. 
Same thing with the other side. And if you're happy with everything, you don't even have to start at the top of your leaf. You can always just add, you know, that little bit extra. And then this time you're going to rock this direction. And then slowly slide your brush in. So you're just using the tip. Okay. Is that simple enough for you guys to try to figure out how to do shamrocks now? I have made them, you know, a little bit more fancier too. You know, you can do like a more of a tear kind of effect. Anywhere I've kind of made them a little bit more shell strokey. Right, so and a little bit more bumpy, but I kind of come down and then kind of go up and still get that same kind of heart shape effect. Okay. And then again, a little more bumpy. And then down again. A little bit more advanced. Okay. Just a little bit wavy. Wavy teardrop. Okay, so come up, bring it in, and then out, and then bring it in. Okay, if you want to make them a little bit more. A little bit more wavy okay so it depends on how much experience you have so you need to start off with the simpler versions first you can always bump it up with a little bit more of a wavy soft shell stroke in there as well okay and then again you want to fill in these areas okay so just tap in that little bit of a v shape you can always just fill in things if they're not, you know, you don't have to be totally perfect. Okay, and then tap in your little V-shape and then bring down your... Okay. So I cheat a lot, you know, they don't have to be always perfect. Sometimes I have to just use the corner of my brush just to fill things in again a little bit properly. I'm using a big three quarter, but it won't matter. You're just going to make a smaller one, right? So if you see the size of my brush, I'm just kind of bending it over, and my pivot point is not far off the original version, right? So it's just the top part of my brush that is bumping around. Okay, can you see that a little better? Yeah. Right. So you're using a forward pressure to get it to bump and then you're going to bump out again okay so it's just a forward pressure smooth ones i don't mind to show you guys again i want to make sure that you're happy with what's going on on paper and then it'll be very easy for you guys to move on to the, the project and in the project, I do use a couple different sizes here, too. I use the 3 quarter, then I went down to the 12, and then these guys, I use the 10. Okay, so if, while you're practicing on paper, if you want to grab uh, a couple different sizes of brushes, try that with. Okay, so you're going to see that they're going to be smaller, right, with a smaller brush. But it's the same technique. To create those little hearts i should have had the technique in the valentine's area then that way you would have been pros by now all right so if you want to just make them three you can okay the traditional one so, but you can see how it was very dry okay i don't have enough floating medium but as long as you're getting the shape going on then you can go over it again, no problem when you do it on the canvas. 
And on the canvas that's been previously painted, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to get that slip going on. Okay. So I have made them where I have the dark on the outside as well. But it really just depends on the color of your background. Okay, so if you're in a really light area, if you've got something else, some other design that you're doing one day, and it's, you know, really, really light, then you can easily reverse this. Okay, and, oops. and then I would do the opposite. I would put the light at the top, so then that way you're making your little V with the light at the top. So that it's the same color as your base of your inside. And then I would make my little stem from there. So I would just reverse everything. Just flip your brush from one way to the other to do it. Does that make sense? This little stem area? So just make sure that you're starting with the same color as you got on the inside and then flip down. So sometimes if you're doing like a big field of them, you know, you can start off with a layer of them with the dark on the outside and then you're going to do a little bit here and there scattered with the light on the outside and going back and forth and making different variations. And then as you get closer and closer to the foreground, you're going to make them, you know, even brighter and lighter on the edge. Uh, so then, you know, wherever the sun is going to be hitting them more, uh, they may want to look a little bit different. So you can definitely go back and forth with your brush, um, depending on what you're doing. For this one, I, I decided that having them with the light on the outside pops a lot brighter with the darker, some of the darker areas. So that's why I chose to do them with the, the white on the outside. Alrighty, so when we're ready there, got some more practicing going on there. I'll let you finish a couple more leaves, get comfortable. And you'll see some of them I didn't flip. I just flipped the ones at the top, the bigger ones, the big focus ones. And then I just left them kind of, you know, I didn't flip all of them. Like I said, it's always easier to come in and add your little white highlights on the end on the second coat, in my opinion. You know, you just get more control of what's going on, and then you can easily flip over an area and, you know, make it even tighter where you can layer over each other a little bit. But you do want them spread out. Like this one here almost looks like a flower too much. Where this one I actually like the placement more of, where you can actually see the separate four separate little hearts, where this one is almost too much, you know, so it, it can look like a green flower to me. But having a variety of them, they're all going to be different, you know, some of them in the wild have one leaf missing because, you know, a bug came along and ate it or something. So definitely you don't have to have them all totally, totally perfect. And then to make this guy flipped over, I just moved my canvas upside down or on the side and I made him this way. And then when I made my stem, I just kind of curled him in. So I'm going to show you that when we recreate it together. 